Chapter 8, Echoes. In his office on the university campus, an associate professor in his late 50s called out to the young man he'd caught typing at his computer. You there, just what do you think you're... Misusaro sensei, it's been a while, Aoba said, scratching his jaw, which still tingled from removing the artificial skin. Misusaro grunted in annoyed surprise. Aoba, what brings you? Hey, get your hands off my keyboard. That's some welcome for a former student who's come to visit you after four years. Then again, I'm not exactly thrilled to be here myself. Aoba continued typing as he looked over his shoulder. If you'd kept your old password, I might not have had to make the trek. Aoba's chair creaked as he swiveled to face the older man. So then, down to business. Where are the copies you took of the quantum wave mirror blueprints and the test data? I don't know what you're talking about. Dr. Akagi Ritsuko asked your opinion on quantum wave collapses. At the time, I just started at NERVE. I only found out later. Mizuzato was silent. If she asked for your opinion, that means she showed you the data. More silence. I wonder why she asked someone outside the organization for help. You might not realize this, but our intelligence division is quite terrifying. Mizuzato remained still for a moment. Then he opened the door of a small humming refrigerator, retrieved a can of beer from its hiding place behind a bottle of mineral water, cracked open the tab, and drank it all at once. He slammed the empty can onto the desk. It's because the mirror can destroy Ava's. Oh, that was quite the statement. Don't get me wrong. The mirror can't produce energy on the same scale as an S2 engine, but an Ava's core has minute contact with other dimensions. The mirror reflects those extra-dimensional quantum waves and keeps them from crossing into our own dimension. In other words, it suffocates their cores. The professor nodded. Okay, Aoba said. But even if the calculations checked out, you would never had had the means to construct the thing. It's not just shells, it's... With some minor adjustments, a mirror could boost the core instead. That's what you want, isn't it? Well, I've already done the calculations. What? Another surprise? When Dr. Akagi saw the design, she told me it was her mother's data. That woman is scary, Ioba. Mitsuzara opened the drawer of his steel desk and reached inside. He produced an envelope containing documents of an old storage device and tossed them to Ayoba. The young man rose. Thanks, Sensei. Everything is still in the old geo front, covered in dust, but we lost all our data three years ago. I'm in a hurry. I've got to run. See you later. Not if I can help it. Where am I? A sunlit porch. It's fall. I've never seen fall. Warm colors fill my sight. A feeling of nostalgia. Whose memory is this? There's so much light. I can't see clearly around me, but it doesn't feel too bright. This world is like a dream, and lend me a hand. Mother, I'm not surprised. This feels natural. I thought of something interesting. She says we might be able to do it if we work together, like folding a very large bed sheet. I'm not sure what's going on. I don't quite follow what she means. Come, I stand. We step down into the garden. Here, I'll hold this end. She spreads it open, or at least that's the mental image I try to form. Following her motions, I pinch with my fingers and spread my arms wide. A tremendous roar, like an ocean wave crashing onto rocks, thundered through cage two. Its vibrations were so strong that they could rattle bone. The technicians cried out in surprise. The tremor kept on coming, as if a massive waterfall had appeared right beside them. Maya dashed up to the control booth, feeling as though the air were compressing her entire body. What's happening? she demanded. The scientist watching the scanner had turned pale, and her shouted replies disappeared into the noise. I can't hear you. As a general rule, Maya stayed at least two paces away from other people, but this was an emergency. She leaned in and asked again. The S2 engine had vanished, the scientist replied. Could it have gone to the other side? What? If that were true, then all the energy would also be going to the other side, and we wouldn't be able to detect it. Let me see. Maya peered at the display, and her expression changed. 
where the S2 engine had been was an unmeasurable field, just a black space on the screen. The personnel in cage 2 were all shouting at each other, trying to understand the situation. The cage was filled with noise, not just sound, but noise of every kind, gravitational, magnetic, radioactive. The noise so overwhelmed the three-dimensional scanner that the system was on the brink of crashing altogether. But that wasn't what surprised Maya the most, nor was the black unmeasurable space. What surprised her was the soup around it. The Ava's organs had begun reasserting their boundaries with terrific speed, except... This is different from before. Unit 1 is developing into something new. The giant's internal structure sprang into existence with explosive force. Where it hadn't been removed, the Type F restraint armor was being pushed past its limits. A section of plating flew off the Ava's arm, which was now visibly larger. The remaining armor followed suit. The technical officer shouted, Don't stand in front of its chest! Why not? yelled an engineer. Because of that! The technical officer pointed at the cage wall facing the Ava where a wide patch of its surface had changed color. Smoke drifted off of it, as if Ava-01 was emitting something. Turn off lights 4, 5, 8, and 9, the technical officer ordered. The lights in front of the Ava went dark, and the soft pink glow remained. The effect was more pronounced in the LCL, where splintered light radiated out from the Ava-01's 01's chest. All personnel put on your protective suits, Maya shouted. The light now seemed to be coming not from the Ava itself, but from a point in space in front of its chest, as if an invisible lens floated there, pouring out a torrent of energy. That's proton decay, gasped the scientist in the front control booth before bursting into laughter. Ha! I've never seen a particle, and I get to observe a dozen of them up close. Incredible! Put on your protective suit, another scolded. Those particles are flying in from extra-dimensional space. As the crew shouted back and forth, excitement and emotions running high, the service bay door slid open. They turned in unison. A crane arm entered the cage on an overhead rail. Ten wires hung from the crane, holding an armored chest piece reworked from an abandoned design, the magic mirror that could kill an Ava. The crane brought the mirror to a stop near Ava-01, which was still shedding its own armor. Maya shouted as loudly as she could to be heard over the waterfall roar, waving her arms broadly within her protective suit. Everyone, to me. The scientists tapped each other on the shoulder to pass word along, while the engineers, more used to working in noisy environments, used hand signals. They gathered in front of Maya, a sea of orange protective suits. Is everyone all right? Maya asked, thinking, when did I start worrying about others? Her crew's eyes were wide with fear and excitement. I better have the same look on my face, too. Everyone knew that they were present for something extraordinary. Like everyone standing before her, Maya had been thoroughly soaked by the condensation. She wiped the droplets from her glasses and dried her forehead with a sleeve. Anyone who hadn't joined this team until after the battle at Nerve HQ was seeing her smile for the first time. The situation has changed, so I'll give you a brief rundown. If anyone has doubts, please share your opinion because we're about to install the mirror. The chest armor had a more complex shape than the standard Ava design. It was the very antithesis of grace and elegance. There was a certain chemistry inherent in mechanical design, but this armor came across as the product of a designer who threw everything at the wall to see what stuck. This Ava killer is a lot heavier than it looks. Until now, Maya explained, Unit 1 has operated by recovering energy escaping our observable universe into the higher dimension. Like recycling, offered the technical officer, a tall woman who had placed herself at Maya's side. But now that extra... But now that extra dimensional energy is cascading over to our side, completely unchecked. Too much of a good thing, said the technical officer. Right now, Unit 1's body is transforming at an incredible pace, but this is not some kind of self-destruct sequence. The Ava is not trying to discard its body, nor is it going to release all that energy. The crew erupted, but Maya brought them to order. However, the estimated volume of this energy is increasing proportionally with the speed of Unit 1's growth. Maya pointed to a chart indicating the predicted levels. At this mark here, the reconstruction of its body should be complete. But look how the energy keeps rising after. The line remained nearly straight all the way off the chart. If we can't get the energy under control, Maya continued, the reconstruction process will run haywire until it finally breaks down. The end result will be self-destruction, and we have no way of knowing how much damage it will cause. Maya looked at the faces of her crew. She had their complete attention. Start attaching the prototype restraint armor, Maya shouted. Her throat was getting scratchy. She wasn't used to speaking so loudly. 
The mirror will keep reflecting the energy back on itself until it returns to the other side, hopefully before our universe is torn apart through the extra dimensional window. For the second time in several days, an attack alarm added itself to the noise in the cage. But the technical officer ordered the crew to keep working. Equipment and transport teams, come to meet me at cage one. Everyone else, follow Chief Babuki's commands and start installing the armor. The cluster of orange bodies hustled off in two directions. Toji appeared at the entrance of the cage. Hey, uh, I heard you need as many people as you can get, so I came to help with the physical stuff. Maya pressed a damp protective suit into his hands and barked, Wear this! Then with some surprise, she added, Why didn't you evacuate? You have a family, don't you? A sister? Yeah, I was leaving because of that, but before we got to the caldera, I decided to check in on Shinji, and then Tofi unfolded the soggy suit with a look of disgust, but put it on anyway. Well, the alarm went off. Sis in the lobby watching our bags. Anyway, what's all this noise? Maya pointed at the LCL. Steam rose from its surface. Look, no coffin makes that much of a racket, Maya-san. Shinji's, he's still melted inside there. 